we are on another field trip today. We've had sheep for all of two minutes and I thought there's no better way to learn than asking the expert. So we're out here in Freeland, Michigan um, with John and he's gonna tell us uh, where we are and a little bit about um, about your farm, your operation here. All right, so uh, we started the uh, Flying Dutchman farm about three years ago and uh, been carrying about 100 sheep uh, during our peak time and right now we're probably right around 45 uh, ish and then we've got um, 15 uh, low-line Angus and we're gonna have our herd up this year to probably about 21 22 wow. and, um, <clears throat> and in addition to that then we we've got the blackberry raspberry farm and we're gonna start expanding into other little bear you know different berries uh, along with that so yeah, yeah wow awesome well we're gonna get to know his flock a little bit and um, about sheep in general and then maybe we'll get to see some of those berries so let's take a look what made you get started with the sheep and the low-line angus such neat breeds but what made you say this is what i want to do with my land uh because we had the land we had horses we had the land needed to do something with those dogs <laughs> and because uh, they're just busy if you don't have anything yeah. to do with them and um and i wanted good food <laughs> and we weren't getting it was good but it wasn't you have if you have something that's grass like the beef grass fed but then grass finished so we don't finish our beef on green the breed marbles out on grass alone it marbles mm. out great and uh the flavor is is really good there's a a depth of the flavor that you just don't get and mm -hmm. uh, so we really enjoyed that and then um, with the sheep and stuff it's the same thing my my wife couldn't stand lamb you know 20 years ago she's like I ain't ever touching that stuff again <laughs> and then we tried the Katahdin and she's like oh, it's not bad you know I could have that so because it's much more milder mm -hmm. and uh, so it's a great introductory lamb for somebody who's not used to lamb yeah now i get a complaint from people who are used to lamb <laughs> who want, like that heavier taste yeah and uh you know they're like yeah your lambs are okay you this is one of our bottle babies so Occasionally you'll get a sheep. They, they only have two teats. So she was a triple. Oh, okay. Lay. And uh, so what, is it, what ends up happening is <clears throat> I try like crazy to have them steal milk from another, another lamb. But if there's a case where they can't or they're having a hard time or whatever, then we'll bring them in. And then it's, you know four times a three to four times a day feeding them and it's a pain. Yeah, and you did that. Oh yeah. Yeah. Um we have had one bottle baby on our farm and um I got it through a week and then we sold it was a goat. Um and we sold it because yeah that's a lot. It's yeah. just like having a newborn. Oh really. it is. Yeah. Away. Away. Away to me. Not listening to y'all. No. There you go. We it's would, funny, he gets, if there's like a building or something like that, he gets kind of messed up with some of that. <laughs> well, we wouldn't know the difference. It looks like he's doing a I good know, job to just, me. I know, but it's just, he cracks me up. <laughs> hmm. <clears throat> um, yeah, so they have, you know, with the hair and stuff, mm -hmm. uh, we don't have to shear them. And um, the nice thing about this breed is they uh, they don't have the lanolin in the wool. So you're so like a wool breed lamb, it'll have lanolin in it. It can it can taint the meat okay. to get a much stronger flavor. Whereas these ones are pretty mild. Okay. But yeah, she's she's our bottle. She's two years old. She's our bottle baby, and she's small. <clears throat> you know, as far as they go. But she's yeah. a she's a good mom. Aww. Um, but yeah no, they're, they're good animals to have around and so i like cute. them a lot we yeah. move we move them so much like 
I'll take, like, we'll have, this past year we had about 100 sheep. And we'll put them on this for, like, three days. That's it. And then we move them off. Because we want to get in that sweet spot for the grass to grow. Okay. So, you know, like, in the springtime, it's like, the grass is growing like crazy. But we want that all the time. I see. So you, you get it right around that five inches. And you get them off. And... You let it, you let the tip, you'll see where the tip of the grass is, looks like squared. You wait for the tips to kind of grow back oh, okay. oh, to a point. And then, and then you can put them back on. But yeah. you've got a lot of air, nice area to rotate. Mm. Well, a hundred is a lot of sheep. Yeah, well, we, uh, there, <laughs> it's pretty cool because there's like some neighbors down about three quarters of a mile down the road there and about a mile down Wilkinson. And uh, we drive them right down the road. Wow. And, uh so we'll bring them right down the road, temp fencing the, the area. They get to watch uh, the sheep or the cows. Or so whatever. wait, tell me how you get, you drive them. What is that? You herding them down yeah. the road. Yeah. That is the coolest thing. Yep. So we'll, he'll, he'll take them right <laughs> down the road and we'll just, I'll just walk with them and we'll, we'll go oh. right over there to the, wherever they're at and wherever we need to put them. And, uh, uh, they'll be there for a couple of weeks. And so uh, cool. yeah, the, uh, the people love it because they can look out and they got they got the view. Yeah. And then they're gone. <laughs> <laughs> you know, and then well, they know they know the little man's gonna <laughs> he's gonna tell them what to do here. So show us what they do. All right. So right now he's he's doing the fetch. So basically he comes behind him and he'll come up in front of him. Now he's gonna try to stop them. Lay. Away to me. See, away. With your rotational grazing, you're always moving them. So I'm curious about housing. Do you have to move any sort of shelter? Are they okay? Um, does seasons matter? What are the lowdowns on shelter? Okay, so it depends upon where they're at. If they have some natural shelter, then we'll use that. But I made, I took a hay wagon and I made uh, like a sunshade that comes off the, the side Ooh, of it. Yeah. And then I can put a water tank on top and then fill that up. And But in the realistically, the sheep don't drink anything. I could put a bucket of water out for 100 of them. And if I have anybody yeah. drinking off of that, we're lucky. But the cows, the cows will go through 100 gallons a day. Is that, I'm just going to guess here, is that a ram? Yeah, that's a ram. You and can, is that one? Yep. Okay, now, I see how they're bigger. <clears throat> yep. Now you can see a little bit of red on the front of him. Yeah down low so we put a rattle paint on them okay so it's a uh it's just a like a gooey paint and you'll see some of the sheep have the red know. red butts. ours have blue butts yeah yeah i haven't used one of those yet but yeah now <laughs> yeah it, it's pretty messy but, <laughs> yep so yeah i think most of the other ones have either washed off because you know yeah everything was done right. in december and you know, there's some bigger ones. They invest in the ultrasound to know because oh. if you have open U's, they'll they'll get rid of them right away because if they're not. What does that mean? So. Oh, it, oh, because they want to breed them. If they're open, you mean <clears throat> they didn't take? They didn't take. So if they don't take, you know, if you have a big operation, you, you need to move right. them on the on the right. down the road. But you know, as far as I go, I've had I've had really good luck. We don't. So I'll go down through all the rows with them. And by the time I get back, that grass has already grown up. Oh, I mean, wow. it's amazing. Yeah. The biology in, in, the, in that field over there is really good. Yeah. <clears throat> well, and neat because they're naturally fertilizing your, your harvest too. Yep, yep. Oh, how cool. Yep, so, have to remember that. you know, the, the cool thing is, is, you know, you get uh, cow pie or, you know, their, their poop. Yeah. And um, when you, come back through in a day or two you open it up and there's all those little dung beetles and those little beetles or it might be or it might be all hollowed out it's like a shell by the time i come back it's a shell you know wow and so all them little beetles are going down into the ground and they're feeding the microbes which are feeding the berries that is awesome <laughs> so you get that going but the problem it's not a problem but the thing you have to watch out for is if you overgraze it now you're you're in trouble you're in a mess because you can't get on that then for a long time and you interrupted the cycle and so when you interrupt the cycle you lose something right there 
And if you lose something, then you either had to put an input. How do you know the, like how to control the ratio of how many ewes you keep versus who you're processing that year? How does that work? Well, during the COVID time, it was really hard to get anybody a butcher anywhere. Oh. It, it was like a year out. So, I mean, I didn't even have lambs born and they're like, well, I need a number. And so, you know, and, and then you have issues with that because they may not finish out on that time. But <clears throat> in, in general, we take them, uh, if somebody has a preference where they want to go, then we'll, we'll do that. But for the most part, I've been taking up to B and B branded meats up in Standish. Okay. <clears throat> and then, uh, when we start the retail, we've got to go to a USDA stamp okay. a butcher. And I see. so that one, there's one up at, uh, it used to be Graham's. It's called the cut now, I think up in, uh, Oh, I did see that. I've seen that. Yeah. yeah the yeah. sign for it. So we'll get our place inspected and then we can uh, go through that and then be able to resale for retail. What a neat <clears throat> service to add to the community because there's not anyone doing it right now. No, like no, that. and you know, and the, and the neat thing about it is, well, there's a long story why uh, Americans aren't big into sheep. What? And it had to do with when uh, World War II came out, they had those, I think they were C rations or K rations. So they had canned lamb and it was awful. <laughs> so when the servicemen came back, they're like, I ain't ever touched a lamb again. So you have this, it skipped two or three generations where they never had lamb. Yeah. And, uh, <clears throat> you know, it's just, it's a, it's a shame. I mean, they do such a great job. They're a great addition and you can make money off of these. It's harder to make money off of cows than it is these, you know, but... Mm. Well, and it's f funny because you mentioned it skipped generations. I didn't grow up eating it. I, I don't even know it. if I've had it yet. So <laughs> now that we're in the... <laughs> I'm telling you, a lamb burger is so good. I like it better than our beef burger. Wow. It's just so juicy. It's got a little bit, just a little bit of a different taste. And uh, it's just wonderful. And uh, I just made some... Uh, stew like lamb stew and yeah. put in the crock pot for 18 hours till it all fell so you get a little bit of the bone broth and you get okay. the the meat and stuff and oh, put it all together cool. and it's <clears throat> and if you like garlic you know yeah. and that kind of flavoring it just it goes really well with it are these just sandbags <laughs> yeah just a little bit You want to just walk back? Okay. Oh, how neat. Yeah, this is a different setup, too. And now I get it because you said you lay them down, yep. right? Yep, so they get laid down. Uh, and we, uh, you can see these are branch locks. So these will actually wrap around like that and hold them down. Oh, that's cool. <clears throat> and then these little nodes right here are the, gonna be the floor canes for next year. Okay. So, it's a biennial plant, kind of. Um, so you get the, these change, they'll actually change color and become harder. And they change from a primocane to the floor cane the floor cane then produces the fruit. So we'll get these little things coming out and <clears throat> you know, the idea is that it'll branch off and get a lot more, but you can see down here where I had the clip, the old ones. Oh yeah. And then the, uh, this is the crown of the plant. So you do all of your upkeep in the fall before you put them away. Versus the raspberries we have, we do our upkeep, like trimming out the old that needs to go in the spring. Yeah, you don't want to do it in the spring. So it's different with the, the blackberries. Yeah, a little bit different. Um... So, you know, I'm a pilot and stuff like that. And this is the first year we had the, the babies. And I had three bottle babies. So I got the bottles all set and ready. And I put two to come down. I got one in between my legs, so I'm, you know, <laughs> yeah. I'm doing this. 
And as I look up, one of the jets I used to fly goes right over the top of the head. <laughs> What's the difference? I thought, well, okay, yeah. there's a big change of difference here. Yeah, change of life right there. Yeah.